Are you trying to layout the page in Flutter and not able to decide what to use? Or you want to explore some of the most common feature? Here you go. In this video, I will discuss about top 5 widgets to build a page easily. Hello and welcome back to channel Codex. This is your host Afzal and you are watching Flutter Basic Series. Before we actually begin, let me thank all the subscribers. We have entered 1000 plus subscriber club and counting. As a giveaway, I am going to provide two license keys for Eagle software. To know more about it, watch the video till end. Without delaying much, let's begin with our first widget. As the name suggests, it's a group of widgets placed vertically. It's as simple as that. If you come from Android background, that is called linear layout and if you are an iOS guy, that's called stack view. So don't get confused with the naming convention. What basically happens in column is your elements will be placed vertically one below the other. So let's understand this with uh, design. So here I have three widgets, an image, text box and another text box, which is placed one below the other inside a column. So if you have to achieve something like this, you have to use a column. Now, the main thing to remember about column is this. The main axis of the column goes in a vertical direction and the cross axis goes in horizontal direction. Now let me tell you there are three most important properties which is commonly used for column that are main axis alignment, cross axis alignment and main axis size. Let's jump back to the code and see how we can deal with column. So here you can see that I have a pretty simple structure. There's a column and there's a three elements inside it. One is this logo, there's a spacing and there's a column again inside a column. You can nest as many as controls you want. There's no restriction on that. So inside a column I have a text. I have two text widgets. Fine. Now let's discuss the properties. So you can see that I have used main axis size as min. Why I have done that? Let's remove it and see what is the effect. If I save it, you can see that the column expands vertically. So by default, the main axis size of a column is set to max. So if you don't specify, it's going to take the entire space available to it. For that purpose, I have used a main axis of size minimum. Now you know what is the use of min and max and how it works. Now the next thing is main axis alignment. To align your widgets in main axis, you have to have enough room, correct? So with main axis size minimum, you are not going to see any effect when you put main axis alignment. Let's, let's see real quickly. So I am going to specify main axis alignment to the end. I want the controls to be end. But that is not affecting because these controls they are tightly packed inside this column. The, our column is not this big. Our column has a minimum size its children requires. So this is already packed. So whatever you say start and center it's going to fit here. You will not see the effect. Now let me change it to max and see. You can see what column has expanded and this children's are having enough room to adjust and to make its alignment so now you can say that you want it to be center or maybe start different properties you can try okay so what I'm going to do revert back to the original code and this looks awesome now let's talk about cross axis alignment so you can see that this image and the things are centered by default. So cross axis alignment has a default value of center. If you want things to be centered, you don't have to specify. That's the default value. If you want something else, so you can specify cross axis alignment to one of these property. So here, if you, uh, if you want to say start, so your things will begin from start. If you say end, your alignment is going to be at the end. Now you may say why this 2 is not getting affected, why this 2 didn't align to the end because here I have used another column inside and explicitly I have specified that this 2 should align from start. 
because this two title and subtitle I want to be aligned from start and rest of thing I can control from here so inside a column if you want different alignment for your widgets you can nest with another column wrap wrap your widgets with the column and you can easily control individual controls there's a other way also to put alignment to the object but that only works on the single object so I'm not going to get into that how we can do with the column that is our main agenda because we are trying to learn the basics of flutter with these five widgets so let's remove this property and we have this nice card as per our design now let's move to our second widget so our second widget is a row this behaves similar to the column but the only difference is the widgets inside the row will be placed horizontally so whatever you're going to push inside this will be placed in a x-axis like this I have this controls there's an image there's a column around here there's some spacing and sorry okay there's some spacing and there's an icon so again similar to the column we have this concept of main axis and cross axis inside a row the main axis of row goes in horizontal direction and the cross axis goes in vertical direction so whenever you say main axis alignment cross axis alignment this is going to affect in this particular direction so this is the important thing that you have to remember about row and column that row column has main axis in vertical direction row has main axis in horizontal direction I think this is quite understood but this is the point where majority of people make mistake they want to align their widgets in some direction they, they are trying with the different properties and not able to achieve what they want so I just wanted to make it clear fine now let's jump back to the code and see how we can deal with a row <coughs> so let me just quickly change the page here I'll say row demo for the source code I'll give the link in description you can go ahead and check later for now let's see we have this items which is a logo there's a spacing there's an expanded widget and at the end there's an icon so these four widgets are placed in a horizontal direction okay now there's no property specific property I have assigned here because the main axis alignment it's already taking the max size which I want and for this extra padding I have used a padding widget for cross axis alignment this is already centered as a default value so that will work for me if I want to place something say for example let me show you if I say cross axis alignment to end how it's going to look like see this I can move down so now all the widget inside is aligned to the end in cross axis this is the cross axis for row so I don't need this the default value of center will work for me now you may say that for main axis we have a main axis size where we can control how it's going to shrink and expand in main axis but what about cross axis there's nothing called cross axis size we have only cross axis alignment if you want your control if you want your row or column to stretch inside a cross axis to expand in cross axis then you can use a property of cross axis alignment and give a value of stretch so this will stretch your control in cross axis see this is how it's going to look main axis it's already expanded now we expanded this in cross axis so this behaves like a cross axis size but this is named as cross axis alignment. This is an important point to remember. I hope I made this point clear. Now let's move to our next widget. Stack also has the children's property. It accepts multiple children, but instead of working in X or Y, which is horizontal and vertical direction, it works in Z direction. So this is kind of a 3D thing. Whatever you are putting on the screen that is going in the Z direction. Like you have placed something inside a box and you are seeing it from the top. So all the elements you are going to push that will be placed on top of each other. And you can see the top element first and whatever remaining visible area that you can see. Let's jump into the code and see how we can achieve this UI and uh, how to place widgets on top of each other. With the help of stack and we'll also discuss some of the properties and some of the most commonly used widgets inside stack 
Eagle is the software to organize your images, assets, and digital file at one place. You can filter with as simple as providing a color or shape or there are other parameters to filter with. Not only that, it comes with a browser plugin. So if you like some image on the internet, you just have to drag and drop and it's there in your organized folder. Simple, isn't it? But what if I want to download multiple images? Just press Alt 1 and you will get the list of all images available on that web page. Select as many as you want and click import and here you have it. You can use these images in any software you like. Just don't forget to credit the author. There are other tools like capture page, capture area, bat save with Eagle software you can use. All you have to do is subscribe the channel right away, like the video and provide your comment with the hashtag flutter. I'm going to choose the comment which I like the most and I'll give away two license copy of this cool software. Now back to our video. Let's do this exercise again. I'm going to change my page to stack demo. And see we have this kind of design. Okay, maybe I change it. So let's discuss this first. Then I'll show you how we can place that icon as well. Now you can see that we have one opacity element and there's a one position dot fill element. So this opacity actually contains our previously designed row. If you see inside, we have the same row which we designed previously. On top of it, I just added opacity to give it a feel of like not clickable, disabled. Now, this element was there. On top of it, in Z direction, we added position.fill. Now, position widget is commonly used with a stack. With positioned you can specify the exact place of widget here I have used a fill which means whatever you are going to place that will fill the entire space available to it inside that you can use any widget here I have used an icon with this cross so this gives a feel of not clickable item okay uh, let me show you the example which I have designed in Adobe XD use a positioned and this time we are not going to use a fill instead we'll give exact position so let me just add a child quickly to it now you can see the default behavior of this stack that whatever you're going to push into the stack that will be placed on the top left corner and you can change that position by providing left so say for example I want 8 pixel from left hand side and from top I want 8 pixel down and now we got this star over here so position position dot fill align these are the widgets which are commonly used with a stack so you can place as many as elements you want and that will be placed on top of each other as I said earlier and that makes it more flexible you want to have something say for example you want something over here bottom so it's very easy you can just duplicate and say from bottom I want 8 pixel from right side I want 8 pixel now you have it here you can define from right I want 30 2 pixel that will come here you can play around with the entire space you have available with you container one of my favorite widget container is like a wrapper it doesn't do actually much to the layout but it has all the necessary properties to customize your widget say for example you want padding you want margin you want shadows you want uh, maybe gradient background Tons of features are packed with container that makes it more flexible. Always, when you feel like you have to decorate some of the widget, you can use container. Let's jump into the code and see how does it work. So I have set here the... This is again the same code which we used for the previous one. Instead, I just wrap this row inside a container. One of the most important property of container is decoration. 
you can customize your container as you want with the help of decoration say for example you want to change the radius of this border you can do it with the help of border radius property okay then you want to specify a gradient now this gradient can be linear gradient radial gradient starting from center or however you like you can specify multiple colors to have your gradient this is a two color gradient starting from dark blue to something light blue you can add as many as color you want in this array so it automatically it will adjust the gradient in that manner now with with this color property you can specify some of the other settings like from where your gradient should begin so you can say from top right or top whatever whatever you want so for this demo I'll say top center where your gradient should end I'll say bottom center so basically I'm creating a vertical gradient over here you can see from top center to bottom center the gradient has changed you can all you can also specify stops if you want so you can specify custom values from where it should start which color should take how much space you can give it tile mode and there's many more to it right same thing goes with radial gradient okay now we have covered the gradient part now let's look at the shadow part so you can specify shadow to container by using a box shadow and this is an array of shadow so here i have specified only one shadow container itself has so much to talk about that I can create on the video for container itself so if you guys are more interested on container part or you want to learn more features about container then write down in the comment and I will create a video for container but just to cover it uh, quickly let's talk about box shadow so how we can give shadow to container here the remember shadow box shadow is an array so you can specify multiple shadows so here I have given one shadow which is of color pink just for demonstration purpose it's and blur radius what it's going to do it will provide the blurriness till 12 pixel and it has an offset of 3 by 3 which means the shadow is 3 pixel away from horizontal axis and 3 pixel away from vertical axis now if you change something like in vertical axis I want to displace the shadow by 12 pixel this will grow like this so there, there are many more as I said one common mistake usually people do with container that they specify color initially something like say for example colors dot red okay now you will get this error if you are using decoration you cannot specify color outside because all the decoration thing has to be inside the decoration property that is the common mistake people do while developing if you have color outside no worries just press alt key and down arrow you have your color inside we're done with the container now last but not the least oh in fact this is list almost all application has list either it's a collection view recycler view list view whatever you call it but you have a, some sort of listing inside mobile application and that makes it a building block of mobile application that's why it's covered in our top five widget now we'll see how easy it is to produce a list inside flutter let's jump to visual studio and here is a list demo again it's the same card we have the same container now what is the difference is we have wrapped everything inside a list view builder now there are different variants of list view that is called list.generate list view.builder list as a control itself and then we have list style and there are many more to it again list view is a very big topic but as the top five widget what we are going to look at these two properties one is item builder now remember item builder takes two parameter one is the context and second one is the index now, this is the key part where you are getting the index of your list say for example you have list of contact and you have 10 contacts so while iterating it will give you the index that I am iterating the first contact which means the zeroth element for each item the index will be changing and you'll be getting a different contact okay and this contact you can use inside your 
control here like something like this you can say contact dot name contact dot phone number you can map it here this is how list view binding works now the second property of the list view which I want to discuss is item count say for example you have contacts as list then you can say contacts dot length so it will dynamically take length of your list and it will iterate through each item using item builder and it will return each time a new container and let's see how it's going to look like so this is our just single element I'm going to change this value to hard-coded something 5 again okay and now let's change to list demo and see we have a nice list view over here with all our five elements with that our video comes to end thank you so much for watching subscribe the channel if you haven't already do like this video and give your feedback in the comment section below see you guys in the next one